the saddest thing you can hear an older farmer say is, why are you doing it that way? Because that's the way I've always done it. That's not a good reason, you know. I look at how I grew up in farming with Dad, and I look how we're farming today, and it's absolutely nothing like what we were. We started planting back then about the first of May, and we planted all the way to the end of June. So that's, that's two months. We, we had like eight weeks we, was the planting window. But today, whether we acknowledge it or not, today you have about a 10 day to two week window. We had very, very few of these big rain events. It was, you know, a half inch, uh, it, was, it was more seasonal. That's what you were supposed to get during that time. And, and uh, so what's changing? Something's changing. And obviously I think, uh, you know, you can talk about climate change, but, uh, and farmers will, will really push back when you start talking about climate change. But then you ask them, do you think the weather patterns have changed? Oh my goodness, yes. They're, they're so, pretty, so it's just a matter of how you, how you, you, you couch it. You know, and it's a shame that we've politicized climate change. I mean, that's ridiculous. Science is science. Uh, whether it's man-made or whether it's natural, the bottom line is it's changing. And, and so you can either fuss and argue about that or you can say, well, let's adapt to what climate change is, is happening. So that's what I'm all about too. And so what do you do? A lot of farmers are, are taking like a drainage dish and they're making it like a two-stage. They're, they're sloping the sides, they're widening it out, and, and so it, it can actually have a lot higher capacity uh, for these four-inch rains rather than two-inch rains. We, we've had to put grass waterways where we never had it before because it'll cut a ditch. and th There goes your sediment, there goes your nutrients. Uh, I, I, it seems to me we saw that really change like in the late 90s here. That's when we really started seeing the, the big rain events that uh, we had not seen before, and multiple main rain events, not just one, but multiple. You know, I've been no-tilling continuously for 20 years now, and I did it for economic reasons. I did it to save money, I did it to save uh, time and, and, and energy, but after long-term no-till uh, my, on my farm, I would never go back to farming like I used to with tillage because I've seen the, the benefits that's given my soil. The more cover you have on your land, uh, the less, the less uh, erosion you'll have and the less uh, soil you'll lose and, and the less nutrients you'll lose too as well. But if we are gonna be stewards of the soil, then we gotta, we gotta act like it, you know? We have to show them that, that we can be trusted and so we grid sample every half acre and so we only, we only fertilize when the, the, the test says you need fertilizer. If it doesn't need fertilizer, we don't, we don't put it on there. Dad was always you know, very, very close to the land. And he, you know, it sounds corny, but he actually said this. I, I bought the farm from him in 1988. And I said, well, any, any words of wisdom or anything that you want me to do? He said, just please leave it in better shape than what you got it. And really, that's, that's really what a farmer needs to do. He, you know, I got to leave, I think, I ha and my farm today is more productive than it's ever been. And I'm turning it over to, uh, to Josh, and, and so I expect him to do this. And I told him the same thing. I said, you know, you got to continually make it better. I've been working on climate issues for, for 15 to 20 years, and there's no doubt that the climate is changing, you know. So let's, let's get off that horse and let's, let's get it fixed.